Hey y'all, I'm Fran with the Developer Relations team here at WP Engine, and I'm super stoked today. Why? Because in this video, I'm going to tell you about the updates in WP GraphQL Smart Cache. Now, for those of y'all that don't know, WP GraphQL Smart Cache is a plugin in the WP GraphQL ecosystem that provides on demand invalidation of cached WP GraphQL data. Now, this means that you can leverage caching solutions like a persistent object cache or a network cache such as Varnish for great performance and automatically invalidate the cache data whenever data changes in WordPress to ensure the cache data stays fresh. So let's jump into the updates. The three main updates in the WP GraphQL Smart Cache settings are network cache, object cache, and debugging. We're going to start with network cache. Network cache refers to a system that stores copies of content close to users, typically within a network infrastructure like CDNs or web servers, to reduce latency and server load. So we use HTTP GET request and requester hit to the WP GraphQL endpoint with the query you passed in. In WordPress, that process is this, and then the response is returned to the network cache. This layer from your host with WP GraphQL Smart Cache provides the data from the nearest cache node instead of fetching it from the origin server. Uh, this process speeds up content delivery, decreases the load on the origin server, and improves the overall user experience by providing quicker access to the content for future users. Now, you do need a host that supports this, and WP Engine supports this out of the box. So let's take a look at the new settings in Network Cache and see how this works. Stoked to be in the WP Admin, and the first setting you see is Network Cache Settings. So let's ex go over this and explain it. So the Cache Control Max Age setting will tell Smart Cache how often you should keep the cache before just expiring it. And this value, when set, instructs the server to include a Cache Control HTTP header with a max age directive in the responses to the GraphQL queries. The max age directive specifies the length of the time in seconds that the response is considered fresh and can be served from the cache. So if the max age is set to like 10 seconds, how I have it here, once a GraphQL response is cached, it will be considered fresh for 10 seconds. Now during these 10 seconds, any subsequent request from the same query could be served from the cache without querying the database again. And after the 10 seconds have elapsed, the cache for that particular response is considered stale and a new response will be fetched and cached within the next request is made. So I've already made a simple query in the graphical IDE. So let's go over to that right now up here in this tab. And I have a query called all post query and I'm just querying for the first five and post has nodes and those nodes contain title field and content field. So when I press play, it executes and gives me the JSON response with the post data. Now, when you create this query in WP GraphQL, it's sent over a GET request, and the response includes X GraphQL keys, uh, which is a header which includes data from WP GraphQL analyzing the query and query response. So let's go over and look into the dev tools on, uh, when we hit the URL on the browser and see this in action. So going over to the browser here, I have to be an un un, excuse me, unauthenticated user. And I'm right here in this tab. So all I have to do is make a query to this GraphQL endpoint right here, asking for post nodes and title with the query parameters all set. And as you can see, I'm getting back that data. Now let's open up the dev tools. Command Option I on a Mac, and then let's hit it one more time. I've already hit this a couple of times. There's the GraphQL document here. And down here we have the data that's coming back. So as I said, the response includes X GraphQL keys header, which includes that data that um, we have analyzing the query and the query response. What happens is the network layer takes the keys, they tag the cache document now, the WP Engine Evercache layer tags, stores it, then future requests will get the document from the cache layer and it won't ping the WordPress server. Now that's stoked. 
this is this is the benefit. It alleviates WordPress server um, hits and increases response time. And then here is the max headers we set there at 10. So if I just keep hitting this, let me go back to the document. There, it says X cache hit one. And then it should say two. And this is all being served from the cache now. It's not hitting WordPress. Stoked. One thing I wanted to show real quick that I get asked about a lot, and so does Jason Ball, is how to make cache invalidation and fresh, accurate, speedy data on a framework that you use on your front end quite possibly the best it can be. So um, Next.js is a framework that uses a method called incremental static regeneration. And what this does is it's a revalidate method where you set a timer on your Next.js front end on whatever page you want to be um, to have ISR essentially. And then once you set that time, whatever user visits that page, if there's stale data, it serves the stale data. And then on every subsequent request after the time interval is up, it'll serve the fresh pages. So let's see how this works in action with Smart Cache because combining ISR and uh, WP GraphQL Smart Cache on headless WordPress will allow you to get give your users the freshest accurate data possible with speed. So let's let's see it in action. Now navigating back over to my terminal, let me get into my Next.js application here. I'm going to clear this up and make it a little bit bigger. Now let me open Visual Studio Code. And and here we are. Here's my Next.js project and just to show you if you for those of y'all don't know and I'm using the legacy pages router because the uh, new app router has a little bit of uh, instability when it comes to uh, ISR for now. But stay tuned for a example of that in the future. But with this legacy pages router, I just have an index page pulling out um, from WP GraphQL, the first, very first post. Um, and then down here within the get static props function. And then I have the uh, revalidate property with the value set to 10 seconds. So let's see this in action. Uh, let me go ahead and jump back into terminal. And then I'm gonna npm run build. Okay, and then let's start up the dev server so that the Next.js application shows up and then we'll go to localhost 3000 and there is the first post from my WordPress backend. Now let's go ahead and change this and see how instantaneous this is on a production level. So Star Wars Episode 6, let's go Star Wars Episode 6 <laughs> and then add some adding some more content on this this post i'm going to update this so that data is updated in wordpress i've got smart cache enabled now once i hit this i get the stale data but when i hit it again after that 10 second interval as well as being set on up on the smart cache side with wp graphql this should reflect the changes and there it is stoked so combining as you saw next.js's isr functionality with wp graphql smart cache and a lower interval to revalidate and um, update that cached data to have cache invalidation is the best user experience that you can give uh, and as a developer uh, the best you could use so now let's dive into the next updated setting which is object cache now object cache allows you to use http post request be mindful that post requests do bypass network cache layers and it hits your wordpress server every time so if you need to use post request go ahead and enable uh, object cache 
Now, it does work the same as network cache where the response is processed from WordPress and cached as an object in WordPress object cache and tagged with the keys. So when you publish content, it's the same where the cache will be evicted once new content is updated. And you could use post instead of get for the use cases that you have with this and you'll get the benefit of caching but not the network cache layer. Let's take a look at this in the IDE. Back in WP Admin here, let's enable object cache settings to use it. And then down here, there is an object cache expiration and this is the time in seconds that it will store the result in cache for an individual GraphQL request. And then the result will be evicted after this amount of time, if not before by related data eviction. And uh, I just have it set to 130 here, but we're gonna save these changes. Make sure, yes, we're on object cache. Let me go to my graphical IDE. And I have an unauthentic unauthenticated request that I'm gonna press play as a user. And once I hit, this is a fresh request. And then if I hit it again, I will get a message from WP GraphQL saying this response was not executed at runtime, but has been returned from the GraphQL object cache. So that's where it's being served from. Now, let me authenticate and then let me make the same request, pressing play. And the extension with the tracing shows the uh, duration time of the uh, response to see how long it serves. So if I just keep hitting it, there you have it. It gets shorter in duration and faster. So that's how object cache works. Lastly, the settings uh, on the WB GraphQL smart cache updates are debugging and that's pretty self-explanatory down here. Um, checking this enables the option and this will purge events to the error log and that'll be helpful when debugging uh, with events that are lead to specific purge events. And then you could just purge the cache now, uh, the GraphQL cache now by clicking this box and it'll purge all responses stored in uh, GraphQL cache. Stoked. The WP GraphQL Smart Cache plugin is a tool that supports and solves cache invalidation and caching optimally for WP GraphQL queries. I touched on some updated features of the plugin. I encourage everyone to dive into the repos mentioned to get their hands dirty and explore all the other awesome features in the plugin. More changes to come in the future, and I will leave a link in the description of this YouTube video because uh, Jason Ball has a deeper dive that he did on the actual uh, features of the plugin as well. All right, until next time, happy coding.